In my book, one of the funniest ongoing things in Canadian politics is NDP leader Jagmeet Singh pretending that he's at all relevant to this current political situation that we have in Canada. He obviously is just a stooge of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, and yet he pretends like the next election in Canada is going to come down to a battle between himself and Conservative Party leader Pierre Polyev because he constantly invokes the name of Pierre Polyev to the point where you might be tricked into thinking that Pierre Polyev is currently the Prime Minister of Canada. I wish he was, but he's not. Justin Trudeau is. But Jagmeet Singh is unable to criticize Justin Trudeau unless he can do it in the same sentence as Pierre Polyev to sort of soften the blow because he's propping up Justin Trudeau at this moment. But it's funny to watch all of his posturing and pretending like he's constantly in this battle of words with Pierre Polyev, who never writes him back, who never acknowledges the existence of Jagmeet Singh and the NDP. He doesn't have to. Right now in the polling, Pierre Polyev is cleaning up with unionized workers, both private sector, and he's starting to eat in with public sector a bit. Although, to be fair, those are voters that the NDP and the Liberals dominate. But the private sector trade union workers, who are supposed to be the bread and butter of the NDP, are being won like 40% right now by Pierre Polyev's Conservative Party. And Jagmeet Singh is now flailing about pretending like, no, I'm the real labor leader. And so he's posting all this stuff about how much he he likes workers. Anti-scab legislation means that workers have the power to demand better wages and working conditions. And he goes on. And what's funny is that whenever he poses with workers and he actually looks happy and like he wants to be there, it's always public sector labor workers who work in like office jobs as, as and as teachers, people who are part of these like bloated public sector unions who end up negotiating against the taxpayer. Anti-scab legislation is stupid. Really, it's just replacement worker legislation. Right now, the liberals are actually pushing for their own anti-replacement worker legislation, which is effectively fascism, because if you actually know what fascism is, fascism in Italian means trade unionism. It means the it means the government and trade unions dominating the economy and basically cramming down on private businesses because the government, with its labor leaders, can make sure that you can't actually have workers unless you go along with the agenda of the government. This is what Jagmeet Singh is a big believer in. Yes, he is effectively a fascist, except he's not an ultra-nationalist. He is an ultra-internationalist instead. But he just posted this video yesterday trying to call out Pure Polya for supposedly trying to censor him in the NDP, even though this is actually perfectly legitimate. What he's about to point out, he's not allowed to do because you're not allowed to have props in parliament, even if you're calling in through Zoom. Pierre Polyev conservatives wanted to censor this sign behind me. I was giving a speech virtually in parliament, and I had this sign referencing a strike from over 100 years ago. I know that Pierre Polyev doesn't want to ever show up to a picket line, and his conservatives don't even want to reference to a strike that happened over 100 years ago. Uh, so sorry, but... Jagmeet Singh doesn't want to show up to picket lines either. I made a video on videos of Jagmeet Singh going to strikes, uh, union strike events, like auto workers, other trade union workers. And he is so uncomfortable around anyone who actually works a dirty job, somebody who is involved in manufacturing, energy, other sorts of manual labor jobs. He looks grossed out by it because he, at the end of the day, is embodied by his gold Rolex watch. He likes luxury, so he only wants to be around workers who work in like HR, who work in teaching, who work very more soft-handed type jobs. They're important jobs oftentimes, but it's like he doesn't like the aesthetic of actual working class people. So he's the one who's most uncomfortable around them. Pure poly of isn't. He actually gets right in there. And that's why workers like him. That's why private sector union workers are going to be voting Polyev and the conservatives this next election. They're not voting Singh, but he has to keep posing about how much he loves workers and strikes when a lot of his labor rhetoric is so stuck in the past. It's such a 1970s way of talking. I'm against scabs and stool pigeons, and we got to stand up for worker solidarity. It's bloated, academic, leftist language that working class Canadians hate. This is a part of Canadian history they wanted to censor and to deny. The 1919 Winnipeg general strike happened from mid-May to the end of June and was one of the most fundamental and pivotal moments in labor history for Canadians. This was a fight 
where workers fought with their blood. <laughs> it was it was the it was the event that basically enslaved workers to unions who get to control when and where they're allowed to work, how much they're allowed to work for, and the seniority system that is crushing skilled workers underneath these bloated apparatuses of union bosses and scheduling issues regarding, oh, how long have you worked for us? And this guy's a little higher up than you. And it, it, a lot of the labor policy that came after the 1919 Winnipeg strike has been pretty disastrous for actual labor freedom and has been holding back the wages of average Canadians ever since. Uh, he's just entirely wrong and all that stuff. But I want to bring up another video where he's, again, trying to pick a fight with Pierre Polyev over nothing, uh, trying to pretend that he he's like in this big emotional battle with Pierre Polyev, and it's the thing that all Canadians are paying attention to. I do want to just bring up this post because it really highlights his inability to make uh, you know, cr any criticism of, of, of Justin Trudeau without also including Pierre Polyev. In this one, he says, Last week, I sent a letter to Justin Trudeau and Pierre Polyev, letting them know that the NDP will force a vote in Parliament to stop grocery greed. That's just false. There's no such thing as grocery greed. It's inflation that you and Justin Trudeau caused, and now you're trying to pretend that Pierre Polyev is involved in the fact that prices are higher after you guys raised taxes and printed more money than ever before and then spent a crazy amount. Obviously, grocery prices have gone up. Grocery net like net profits have actually gone down. He'll highlight a company and say, they made like 100% more profits this quarter than they did this quarter last year. I'm like, yeah. They just sold a chain of 25 uh, gas stations, and so they made a lot of money off of that sale, but it's, they sold that because they were losing money on the gas stations. That's not real profit. That is a one-time issue. That is a one-time injection of revenue into the company by selling an asset off. But uh, to go further on what to Jagmeet Singh saying, today I debate on our motion began uh, today debate on our motion began with the vote taking place in the next two weeks canadians need leadership that stands between them and the unregulated greed of the grocery cartel your brother's part of the grocery cartel he's literally a lobbyist for the most profitable grocery chain in the country metro who jagmeet singh only started making some small criticisms of recently because it turned out that he was effectively helping his brother try and hurt Loblaws by only criticizing Loblaws as like the main figure in the grocery cartel and leaving Metro alone. And for the record, I don't think Metro is doing anything wrong, but Jagmeet Singh thinks they're doing something wrong because he doesn't like profit and Metro is the most profitable, but his brother Guratin Singh worked for them. So he was hands off until about two days ago. Canadians, uh, my, my message for Pure Polyev and Justin Trudeau, it's time to make big grocery giants pay what they owe and put the money back in people's pockets. I promise we're going to, we're not going to back down. How about you lower taxes? I don't know. Maybe it could be a good idea, Jagmeet. We could I don't we could crunch the numbers. Maybe giving people back their own money from the government might put more money back in their pockets. But no, no, no. We need these complex schemes of trying to gouge grocery stores on their corporate taxes and then handing it back to Canadians in bloated benefit programs that nobody can really access efficiently. His idea of how an economy is built is so stupid. That's all I can really sum it up as. It's stupid. He believes that the economy only works when smart men like him are in charge of government and dictate it around and tell people how much they should be setting prices at and how much they should be paying labor and how much what their working hours should be and how much vacation time everyone. That's not how Canada's economy was built. It's how Canada's economy has stagnated when... <laughs> brain trusts like Jagmeet Singh and Justin Trudeau are in charge of the economy and start dictating to the economy how it should function when they clearly have never actually run a successful business in their entire lives and cannot actually centrally control something as complex as a free market capitalist economy. But now I want to jump over to this other video of Jagmeet Singh trying to go after the conservatives for rightfully being against the International Criminal Court, just on the premise that the Canada should not be subject to the International Criminal Court, as well as the fact that the International Criminal Court is trying to go after Israeli generals and the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu for fighting Hamas, an Islamist Nazi organization, and that he thinks that we should be on board with arresting Benjamin Netanyahu if he steps foot in Canada, as if we would ever want to set the precedent that we will hand over people to the International Criminal Court for fighting terrorists. What, are we going to arrest 
the prime minister of the UK because at one point in time, the UK was fighting the IRA. That was basically what he's arguing. At least the IRA mostly tried to not murder 1,200, you know, Northern Irish citizens in a single day the way Hamas did. But here's him trying to create this artificial fight between him and Pure Polyev. Do you think the government is taking a strong enough position on this issue? Not at all. We should be very clear. Uh, Canadians, or Canada was a signatory, one of the initial founders or supporters of the founding of the ICC. That That is a court that we support. And we've been, we've signed on to the international laws. And uh, to, to support to support that court means supporting the decisions that it takes. And that means if the court rules on the arrest warrants, then Canada should clearly state that yes, we would not only respect, we would support the decision, and then we would execute the warrant uh, in, in, in relation to international law. He won't even name the actual people we'd be arresting, because when you actually start listing the people we would be agreeing to arrest, it's ridiculous. Obviously, we're not going to arrest those people because they haven't done anything wrong, let alone anything that should be like decided in an international criminal court. And that's why I find some people who are against like the UN and WHO and WF and whatnot, rightfully so, and they'll be like, yes, arrest those Israeli war criminals. Guys, I thought we were against international institutions. I am. And he's acting like the conservatives are not living up, or this is Jagme saying, like the conservatives aren't living up to the ICC. The conservatives never signed on to it. It was like Kretchen and Paul Martin's government back in the day who did it. And yes, Harper never pulled out of it, but it's because it was pretty irrelevant organization. I guarantee if Polyev, like he indicated, if he was the prime minister, he would have just immediately defunded CAND as part of the ICC because it's a complete joke of an organization. It's far leftists who like to attack Western countries for actually enforcing their, you know, interests, for actually fighting for their own civilians. The ICC does not exist to go after North Korean despots. They don't go after, you know, terrorists in the Middle East. They don't go after Bashar al-Assad or any of those other people. They they re issued an arrest warrant for Putin, but even then they only did that after like decades of not giving a crap about anything that went on in Eastern Europe. They were just trying to build up their reputation. They they legitimately only exist to attack mostly Western countries and ignore the crimes of countries out in the East who are strictly anti-Western. So yeah, Jagmeet Singh is pretending to be irrelevant. And it's just sad watching him act like he's like able to fight Pierre Polyev. It's like your five-year-old brother trying to strike at you and you're like 18 years old. He's not, he can't do any damage to Polyev. He's flailing to try and stay relevant. This is going to be his third election loss come 2025. He should have been removed as the leader when he failed to make any gains for the NDP in 2019, because it wasn't like the NDP was in great shape after the 2015 election. Mulcair lost a substantial amount of seats, and then Singh proceeded to lose more seats in 2019 and claw back like a single or one or two seats in 2021 simply because Aaron O'Toole was a weak leader and he was able to grab some of these like more labor uh, riding uh, districts back from them. But overall, Singh these days doesn't even know what he's doing. He's just kind of making like vague noises about labor and not liking capitalism or whatever, which is exactly the reason why he alienated so many workers in the past. People don't like this kind of of really stuffy old NDP trade unionist rhetoric anymore, but he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know how to appeal to middle-class voters who are 80% of Canadians are frankly middle-class. He doesn't care about them. He only cares about you if you're part of a public sector union. And he thinks that private sector union workers are grubby and gross because they work jobs that you can't wear a Rolex while you're doing it. And that's why Polyev is completely divesting him of all of his support. And that's why Jagmeet Singh is mad at him. And at the same time, too pathetic to go after Justin Trudeau. He is in league with Justin Trudeau. He has made the NDP just a satellite of the Liberal Party, which means that they don't matter anymore, which in my mind makes Jagmeet Singh a great NDP leader because he has made the NDP utterly irrelevant and I only have to make videos about them just to laugh at how irrelevant they happen to be. Anyways, that should be it for me today, guys. Donate to the TNT Legal Fund in the description below if you can. It's the Give, Send, Go link in the description below. And if you happen to live in my riding of Calgary Signal Hill, make sure to vote for me, number one, on your ballot for the Calgary Signal Hill Conservative Party uh, nomination, because if any conservative member in the riding can rank a ballot, so make sure you do. 
It's a bit of a, cl a clunky plug. I'm deeply sorry. And then the TNT Telegram chat is also linked in the description below if you want to get all of our videos, posts, articles, and podcast appearances listed in order and not having to rely on social media algorithms to show you whenever we have something new. Have a great day, everybody.